This is Dr. Charles Parker, and you're listening to Core Brain Journal. It's a place where I connect both fresh discoveries and interesting different perspectives from advanced mind science with the realities of real people and everyday life down on Main Street. Well, welcome board folks. Dr. Charles Parker here one more time at Core Brain Journal. And what we do is we really look at the evolution of neuroscience and take it down to the street level with experts who've been out there, book people who've written books, people who have experienced life changes. And tonight we have a very interesting guest who's had a very different experience in her life than many of us have, but she's lived to tell about it. She's talking a great deal about how she's evolved in a productive way strong way and about her blog we'll talk about in just a second irene gable nick thank you so much for coming on board hi dr parker thank you so much i'm very glad to be here it's gonna be a lot of fun irene's up in the northwood she's up near buffalo and it's cold up there we were just talking about who we got started and so let me go ahead and tell you about our delightful sponsors and then we'll go ahead and get started with her narrative Core Brain Journal is sponsored by, as you know, Direct Health Access Laboratory. They have deep experience with over 3 million studies. They are deep leaders of experience with a big picture of measuring, for example, methylation, cryptopyrrole, and copper challenges, all of which affect brain function dramatically. They provide a global service with a serious molecular neurophysiologic focus. Stay tuned and head over to dhalab.com, dhalabsingular.com forward slash core for more information and some good peer-reviewed references, and pass that over to your medical professionals who are puzzled by what to do with treatment failure. There are some measurement tools over there that you're going to really appreciate. And then uh, CBJ is also sponsored by our colleague, the nonprofit Barry Robinson Center teams in Norfolk, Virginia, who provide residential care on an evolved family, interpersonal, indeed global level. They are TRICARE friendly. They provide a holistic environment that sets children, teens, and families on the path to healing. And of all the residential treatment centers in the country, they are exemplary. I mean, they're not the only one doing this, but they're one of the few that are really interested in comprehensive assessments that include deep biomedical assessments to look at the biology of why things don't go right. And they also have, friends, a substance abuse treatment program, which, hey, they adolescents can have the problem, and they have a very good residential care that addresses that as well. So for more information, go over to barryrobinson.org, B-A-R-R-Y, robinson.org, forward slash core okay. I found this on the web, and so. i can <laughs> did you hear that i did that, that was my siri going on oh. I can't believe it. she's <laughs> talking to me so i'm going to say that again barry robinson.org forward slash core b-a-r-r-y robinson.org so if you go to the forward slash core they'll give you specific information on what to do about options for residential care So with that, let me introduce our guest tonight. Irene is a person who's up there, as I said, up in Buffalo. Her true passion is health and fitness. She's been an avid runner most of her life. And over years, she spent countless hours hiking, rock climbing, mainly bouldering, mountain biking, yoga, Pilates, strength training. And she even learned how to surf, folks, in Hawaii. She gets around. That was fun. (laughs) She's an author and founder of Fit for Sanity, her blog, and it's a glo- it's a guide to parental sanity. We're going to talk more about parents and sanity. And she's always loved helping others, volunteered for great causes. She was a member of the Disaster Action Team with the American Red Cross, taught first aid and CPR, mentored a refugee through the Priscilla Project, and educates the public about giving blood and being an organ donor. That's a very big deal. So the whole reason that she created Fit for Sanity is to really spread the word on what she's learned, her research, and how it can be applied out there on the street level to anybody that's listening here. So with that, let's tell us, if you will, 
Irene, how did you get into, hey, I want to write this. I want to talk about it. What was the impetus for you to actually take it as it will out on the road? Well, thank you, Dr. Parker. That is a great question. Um, I guess how I really got started, I've been a realtor for nine years and a lot of nights, a lot of weekends, and I met someone who really changed my life. And this person said, why don't you start your own business? You are so smart and talented, and why on earth are you, are you, you know, doing something you really don't enjoy? And just do it. So I thought about it, and I did a lot of research. I've always loved to write. I've always been a writer. I've had ideas for different books I've wanted to write for so long. And I just find myself writing a lot. I get lost in it. Um, so I thought, well, how can I incorporate my passions into something that I can help other people and now make this my life and my business? Mm -hmm. So I chose Fit for Sanity because life can be crazy. <laughs> life can be yeah. crazy. And I've been a health and fitness nut, like you said, for a very long time. And just through survival and having two teen and tween aged kids now and trying to manage, balance uh, life, work, and all the different school activities and you know carpooling and all the crazy things going on, I've just developed ways to eat healthy and exercise even on the busiest days. And a lot of these things I share with my audience, people are like, wow, I never thought of that. And I thought, really, everyone doesn't do this? <laughs> I mean, how do you exercise? How do you stay fit? I mean, it's so important. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm 49 years old and knock on wood. I mean, I, I have no health issues and I'm very healthy. I'm fit and I look 10 years younger. So they tell me and it's, it's I'd agree with that. I can uh, see on the video. <laughs> You're doing well, good girl. Well, thank you. But I want to help other people do what I'm doing. And so that's what I've been doing through my newsletter is teaching, teaching others how they can squeeze exercise into their routine, make it more of a habit, and to eat healthier. Um, and that's really the gist of it. So let's talk about it then. Let's break it down. So what happens is let's start all the way back to this other point that you were talking about because we want to get how you got to where you are and how you... Uh, we're, that's kind of where you're going to go in just a minute, but I wanted to get your background of what stimulated you when you were a kid to really start thinking more about being a writer and self-sufficiency and self-management because you're a self-management person, no question about it. So what were some of the difficulties that you had that really stimulated you to be more into self-management? Well, I have to say the biggest, uh, the biggest thing that made me so self-sufficient was that my mother was bipolar. Mm -hmm. And it's sad to say, but there were times when she was in a depressed state where she basically neglected us, not because she wanted to or because she was a bad person, but because she was sick. And we, out of my father, worked and he wasn't around. I mean, he was around every day after work, but we had to cook and clean. And if I wanted clean clothes, I did my own laundry. And if I wanted a hot meal, I cooked. So I've learned to be quite the cook. So I do share a lot of my recipes um, also on my blog and in my newsletter. And that really made me an extremely self-sufficient person. So it really was by necessity. Mm-hmm. So then, then when did you when did you actually start actually the physical part of it, running and that sort of thing? Were you doing that as an adolescent teenager? <laughs> well, I started running cross country when I was a freshman in high school. Really? Yeah. So that really became my love of running, and I haven't stopped since. Um, but I did used to, you know, used to play, play this game in the schoolyard, this you know, like kiss chase thing. And I'm yeah, telling yeah. you, I never got caught. <laughs> <laughs> I was a really fast runner, and I was just, no, and I would run home from school with boys chasing me, and uh, yeah, that that I think is, you know, a step back, but, uh, but it's true. It's true. I learned how to run fast. There's some girls in the class when I was in the seventh grade that were so fast, and <laughs> You know, ben, back then, I mean, I'm a little older than you are. Back then, the girls would chase the boys because they were like, okay, we're going to kiss you and you're going to be embarrassed because we're actually going to kiss you, you know. That's great. And it was a little crazy because then, and, you know, without really realizing it, I didn't, I did want to get caught, you know. <laughs> 
wondered who was chasing, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> so you started early and then you moved right along. Then what kind of things have you done to actually develop your skills with knowing what to do? Uh, what, what kind of uh, development programs have you been into? What, what kind of learning experience have you had? Well, if you want to discuss formal education, I went to school for business. I do have a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, which, um, you know, really has nothing to do with the health and fitness aspect, but it certainly has guided me into becoming a business owner and mm -hmm. just learning about the business industry. I started out in sales at a very, um, out of college, and I actually went we got a two-year degree, and I actually dropped out of high school. Let's just let's just spill the beans. Here. Oh, you did. Tough. That's too bad. What happened? I couldn't. I couldn't handle um, the stress of oh, really? the work yeah. environment, mm -hmm. if my my living environment. And my sister turned eighteen. My older sister and I was the baby. And once she moved out, it got really difficult to be. Oh, here. I got you. So yeah. I quit high school. I got a job, and I got my own apartment at seventeen. And I have been taking care of myself since. And <clears throat> I went to college. I made it, got a two-year degree. And then I had switched schools. And then at some point, I just went into sales. But I did go back later because it was just a personal accomplishment that I wanted to achieve. Yep, yep. At that point, I had many years of sales experience and success under my belt that I didn't need to go back to school. It was just a personal goal. We've so all I, been there. We have definitely all been there. Yeah, right? We There's a certain point where you say, I've got to finish this up. I'm going to do it. Exactly. And that's like with my book. I'm like, I have to get this published. I'm just so excited about it. I am I really think that this book that I'm writing about growing up with a parent who has bipolar disorder is going to benefit so many people. And that's really my why for writing this book. But it's also, I find it self-healing. It's rehashed a lot of memories that I've kind of buried back in my brain, but it's bringing things up. And I think that working through them again has been a healing thing for me. Well, we're right on this subject. Do this. As soon as you get it published and you uh, come up with a title or a pub date, then you let me know, even though we're not going to be on a regular relationship thing going on here, but we'll oh. put it because your <laughs> recording will be green. You know, that's a good thing about doing the podcast. If somebody's interested in being bipolar illness, you're going to come up on Google with our, the way we do it. So you let us know. We'll put the book on. We'll get you done. Keep you. Oh, keep, thank you. Thank you, have, Dr. Parker. Have some great. longevity to it. Nice. So what do you write about on your blog? You know, this, the fit for sanity. What, what kind of things do you think a mother should do. I think one of the biggest things with this, and I'm lo really looking forward to hearing your thought about it, how does one start conceptualizing the schedule? How does one do this when one's like you are, busy mom, kids? How, how do they, what, what are your thoughts about that? Honestly, Dr. Parker, that is a great question. And there's really only the one, the most important thing is that you have to make it a priority because if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of your family. And the absolute, and, I, and people hear this day in and day out, but they don't pay attention to it. They think it's selfish. People say, oh, well, gosh, no, I can't go for a massage or I don't have to, time to go for a run because the kids need this and the kids need that. Well, if you don't take care of yourself and now you have um, an illness or health issues, then you're really not helping your family as much as you can be. So you have to make it a priority. And it's like anything in life, the best way to accomplish it is you have to want it. Yeah. You have to want it. Mm -hmm. And that's motivation. And that's one of the things that I do to try to help motivate people is I do have, um, I offer free health and fitness tips um, via email, daily email tips. So if you go to my website and you sign up for my list, every day I send out a, a motivational email on why you either need to eat healthy today or why you have to exercise or why you should. And my girlfriend called me last week and she said, Irene, I wasn't going to work out. And I got your email and I worked out. So thank you. Oh, good. So, so that is, is, that, is your website then fitforsanity.com? Actually, no, that's where you can actually purchase the monthly newsletter. But if okay. you want a free issue and you want to sign up for my email list, it's my website, irrenegablenick.com. Okay, good, good. Good. Sorry to interrupt. And oh, so, no. 
So then the next question, apropos of what we were just talking about there, is how does one get started? So if you make yourself a little bit of a priority instead of no priority at all, and you make yourself a little bit of priority, how does a person who is not accustomed to doing any of this break out of that shell and and pop into that next level? How do you get started? What what should what are some of the rules about getting started? I'll sign up for my email list. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good one. There you go. Yeah. I'm your motivator. Every day you're going to hear from me. You're worth it. And I will tell you almost every day. Why? Because you're worth it. Because you mm -hmm. are worth it. Um, you really have to find something that you enjoy doing. When it comes to exercise, if you don't like going to the gym, you're going you're gonna to join up. It's January 1st. All the big um, deals are out. It's New Year's. People sign up for the three month or the one year, and then they don't go. Mm -hmm. So one of the most important things is to find something you enjoy doing. Either find a friend, learn how to play racquetball, whether it's tennis, if you like. I like to cross-country ski. So once we have snow, that's what I do. I do run throughout the winter as well. But you have to find something you like doing. And there are so many choices. There's yoga, Pilates. I mean, there's really no excuse. There's got to be something that you like to do and find fun, a spin class. And if it's something you enjoy, then you'll look forward to it instead of thinking, oh, gosh, I have to do that today. Mm -hmm. Or just if, if it's something you want to do at home, get an exercise bike or a treadmill or a step master or something, a stair climber, and, you know, watch television for half an hour. Well, I think that's an interesting point there, that watching television. And the other thing I was going to quickly say something about is having a colleague, a friend be with you because it can be boring if you're just doing it by yourself. And the other thing is when you have a friend, there's a reason to dress out, put the clothes on, go on out. You're going to meet Martha Trueheart out there and you're going to go do what you're going to do as a team. And she wants you to be there for her as well as for you. And you have that mutuality going. Plus you have some fun conversation. Exactly. And, and then, Absolutely. You know, the other one is is something on television. I mean, you can get. I think the other thing is I found a lot of use is is podcasts. Oh. You know, now I'm not plugging myself on this because somebody <laughs> may not be interested in neuroscience when they're walking down the road. But I mean, there are so many interesting things on podcasts that are so much fun. I personally like. Here's the thing with Alec Baldwin. I don't know if you ever listened to him. I have the, not, no. The guy no. is so funny. You know, pe people think Alec Baldwin is uh, whatever, powerful, whatever. He's humble. He's funny. He's, uh, he's a actually uh, quite authentic in terms of his presentation. He's not self-aggrandizing mm -hmm. at all. And I'll he's interviewing really cool people, <laughs> you know. They're, you know, everybody from Dustin Hoffman to, you know, you, you name it. I won't get into names, but. And it's a little bit on the celebrity side thing, but you hear how people in his podcast had their own uh, experiences with things that didn't work out. Jimmy Fallon, for example, great, great, great interview. Jimmy, Jimmy completely blew his first audition. <laughs> <laughs> I love Jimmy. He Fallon. went back and he said, I think it's over. And uh, then he continued to do uh, stand up comedy, and somebody said, they call him and said, let's give you another shot. And, he would, and then because he had the one shot, he knew what he was going to do on the second shot. Right. But I think the idea, I think one of the things that's really cool about podcasts is just like this conversation with you and I, people get an idea of what it's like with real people having real experiences. And you actually wind up having a friendly conversation with somebody you may not know. But when you hear them and you think about what they're thinking about, and I think one of the things that's entertaining about our situation is, I've been doing this for 45 years, but I can still learn from you. You know, so what's going to happen is you're going to tell me some things that are going to be helpful. And that's going to, and all the people that listen to us are going to appreciate that. And it winds up being a conversation that you ordinarily wouldn't have with, because you're, you're going to be an unusual person. You are an unusual person. <laughs> well, I'll take that as a compliment. I did. And, yeah. And you're so right, Dr. Parker, like really. Um, and, 
right now, podcasts are such a rage, and there are so many to choose from. So whatever it is that you enjoy, the thing that you're into, I, I was on a podcast a few weeks from the, the Vegetable Gardening Show, and he talked about growing vegetables, and we talked about eating more vegetables, and so there are just so many options. I did another one with Thirst World Sports, and it, they, you know, they talk about all kinds of different things in politics or health and nutrition. Everyone has one now, and yeah, so yeah. there are so many choices. I prefer music, personally. I like to blast music, and sometimes just getting a new soundtrack, really, my run just flies by. So you're a dancer. <laughs> yes, I am. You are a dancer, girl. I am a dancer, and I will dance around the house. We even have a little dance party when we clean up the dishes after dinner. <laughs> well, I use the dancing metaphor a lot with uh, executive function because what happens to people who uh, have difficulty with executive function also have problems with timing in life, not necessarily dancing per se, but they get desynchronized with their own life process, and we use dancing as a metaphor and I know if somebody's talking about listening to music, they're interested in synchronization. So, yeah, yeah, that's and that's one there. of that's one of the ways you can squeeze in more exercise. Just blast the music, and you can clean the house or just dance in your family room. We like to do it while we're cleaning the dishes because it makes it go by faster. And there's a new song or something one of us plays, and it just makes it fun. That is a trick that you can do it while you're doing the dishes. I think we yes. need a video of that. That should be. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Maybe of my girls. <laughs> they can put a little show on. So then what happens when you have, do you have people that actually consult with you? You have people that listen to your, uh, read your blog. Do you have a consultation practice or what do you have in terms of uh, the connectedness that you do? I do not. I do mm -hmm. not. I'm thinking about it. I am thinking and considering starting off. I actually did. I started a Facebook group um, mm -hmm. that I thought, and I, I haven't done anything with it yet. I'm, I'm thinking about maybe making it more of a, a team kind of effort motivation where people can kind of share their, um, their challenges and their successes. I know that a lot of, a lot of them can be successful, uh, especially the ones that I belong to an entrepreneur Facebook group, and it's really helpful when I have some type of technical problem or I'm looking for a graphic designer or something like that. It's really beneficial. So that is something I'm considering. I have not done it yet. And my, my true love really is to write. I love writing the blog. I love writing my books. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I will get into any type of personalized counseling just because mm -hmm. of the time involved. Yeah. And I think I can re reach more of a, a mass audience if I can just blog and write and create books that people can buy. Sounds very interesting. Now, we're going to take a little break here. And when we come back, I'm going to ask you for some hints, some quick summaries of some of the things you say to individuals when they are struggling, when they're not making it, when they're having a problem, how you can actually help them move on to that next level to get back in the show. That's going to be the next question. I look forward to talking to you about that. We'll be back in just a moment. Sounds great. Well, folks, you know as well as I do that psychiatric treatment failure, especially after multiple medication trials and those very, very brief hospitalizations, may prove insufficient to deal at home with the complexity of troubled children and, and those adolescents from 6 to 17 years old. Improve care, those next mandatory steps, should include a more comprehensive approach to address those multiple levels of challenges, from family to peers to school, diagnostically from defiance to depression, on every level for families, including military families internationally. The Barry Robinson Center's 32-acre open college-like campus in Norfolk, Virginia, provides safety and security and clean, comfortable living how do we know we refer folks over there all the time, strongly endorse what they're doing? So for further information and informed interview, connect at this page, barryrobinson.org forward slash core. Well, you folks already know that here at Core Brain Journal, we're on a mission to introduce you to resources that make significant contributions to the investigation of those predictable mind science applications. 
Our colleagues at DHA Lab Group provide a real difference with treatment options for people at every level, from first awareness of mind problems to those frustrating times when even well-informed treatment becomes surprisingly unpredictable. For my entire professional life, from psychoanalysis to brain scans, I've searched for, yes, improved predictability. The good news for all of us, from professionals to patients, remarkably effective research offers useful, cost-effective, organic options far beyond guesswork with psychiatric medications alone. DHA lab tests measure unbalanced biomedical details through easily available testing, now available globally for a variety of molecular answers from, for example, methylation, copper, and cryptopyrrole challenges. Check in for more details at dhalab.com core. That's D-H-A-L-A-B.com forward slash core. Okay, 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 Irene. I can't even talk. Uh, you know, but we're looking forward to talking to you, Irene, about this because I think the issue for all of us listeners and people who are thinking about these things, there's one thing about getting started, but then there's also what do you do with adversity? I mean, because all of us have uh, challenges in our lives when reality comes and smacks us around a little bit. And so, what we're looking for, and I think so many people are looking for, yeah, there's the getting started thing, and then there's what we were just talking about a moment ago. There's the continuity. What are the, some of the things that would be fun that, to make it fun? And then the next question is, what happens if you get knocked down? What do you do about that? Do you have any specifics about bouncing back? Absolutely. And I, I even find myself who, I mean, I really don't feel good if I don't work out even one day. I, and it's okay to take a break. And I, it's really funny that you say that because um, one of the things that happened last week is I didn't have time to work out. I did squeeze in a quick 10 minute core after I threw something in the oven. So again, it's one of the things, some of the ways I share with you, but don't beat yourself up. Just do better the next day. And I actually wrote a blog about that. Don't beat yourself up. Do better today. Just do better today. Mm -hmm. Don't think, oh gosh, I haven't worked out in a week and now I'm back off track. Just get back on track and start off slowly. Sometimes it's a lot harder to jump back into a full hour routine every day if you just start back in slowly. And there are so many YouTube videos on there. I love so many different, I'll just throw a YouTube video on TV. And just bam, 10 minutes or half an hour, I'll do three different little workouts. And I just feel fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, so the most important thing is just be positive. Just keep moving forward. Realize that you're worth it. And it's okay. It's, it's okay. It's so the next day. It's just not a big deal. If you missed one day or a few weeks even, just get back on track and feel good about every accomplishment that you make. You have a deep Zen attitude, girl. I can see that. <laughs> Thank you. And I, you know, the golden bowl is broken. Uh, it's sometimes easier to tell others, though, because we have a tendency to be our worst critic, right? Yeah, that's so true. But, you know, you said a word in there that I think some of our audience, it was a quick word. It's right in your vocabulary, but it was a little on the edge of some of our vocabularies. And that is core. You said something like, I just did a quick core. Okay, so that would be something that's like, you know, um, a little bit on the out of our range of language. Oh, I was, I was referring to abdominal workout. I oh, apologize. You are. Okay. <laughs> I call it my core. You know, okay. Your back, your whole core is like your abdominal. Everyone wants six pack abs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta work your core every day. I work my core. So, um, not every day, but I try. Um, but it, it strengthens your back and just your whole, I mean, it's your midsection and it really just gives you a good balance and a good feel. So I really so feel that. What's it's your core exercise then? Tell us about that. Oh, well, well, I, um, I do a lot of different things. There are a lot of different push-ups and different types of workouts. And I, I pop in YouTube videos and I will tell you, uh, Cassie Ho, who is one of the, uh, the top YouTube 
health and fitness expert. I love her. Love, love, love. And I pop them in and I do extreme abs, extreme abs two, extreme abs three. And she even has a Victoria's Secret abs. And she has a great, just a huge variety. And if I don't have time to do that, I'll just, I'll just, I'll do either a couple of yoga poses. There are just so many tremendous, great workouts. So what there. was the name of that person that you liked? I'll put it in the show notes. It's called Blogilates, and it's Cassie Ho. She doesn't, I don't know her personally. She doesn't know that I'm, you know, it, recommending what, her. Is it I just, H-O? Is that H-O. her? H-O, yep. Done. Yep, and she is fabulous. So if she hears this, I hope that she's excited because okay. well, um, yeah. I, I do love her and she really, uh, when I'm getting bikini ready or going on vacation and I do it re- religiously every day, consistently, mm-hmm. I really feel a huge difference. So it's no, fantastic. That's different. great. That's great. So now how much do, aerobic do you do? What, what's uh, the situation with your aerobic exercise? We know you're a runner. So you probably on your best day do twelve miles, but because you said- <laughs> no, 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 I'm too busy. I can't. I'm not doing any marathons. That's not me. I'm just an average mom. I really am. So what do you do? You run for a half? Do you do it on a time thing? Then just do like a half an hour? I do, and ideally, I like to run thirty to forty minutes. And but sometimes if I get a twenty minute in, and there are days well, like today, I'm I I only ran for ten minutes. But in my mind, 10 minutes is better than not at all Mm -hmm. because I decompress. I ran fast. I ran hard. Um, If you only have 20 minutes, an interval training is a great way to do it. Just two, uh, two minutes walking, two minutes medium pace, two minutes fast, two minutes, and do three quick cycles of that and you'll feel fabulous. So Go Go ahead, please. So many different ways to squeeze in even just a little bit here and there. And every little bit, you're burning calories and, you know, you're feeling better about yourself and you're relieving stress, which is key. Because that 10 minutes relieved so much stress off my deadlines for today. And I still have a holiday party to go to tonight. And I still haven't wrapped the gifts and I don't have a gift bag. And I'm like, how am I going to wrap this thing? I don't have a box. It's going to work out. You it's going to work it. out. It'll be fine. It's 20 minutes to six. You're going to be in great shape. <laughs> so let me ask you this question then as we wind down a little bit. And this is a big question. I mean, we could spend an hour on this question. I have to come back. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome to come back. So the issue would be the diet situation. You know, there are a lot of different controversies. There are a lot of things going on with diet. And people are talking about, you know, do omega-3 fatty acids, don't do omega-3 fatty acids, do uh, coconut oil. What is your take on what you do with a diet that's going to be your longevity solution? Wow, Dr. Parker, that is an excellent question. And that is something that I'm very, very particular about because you can't believe everything you read. You can't believe everything you read. Yeah. One day, yeah. fat-free, and the next day, alestra. Do not eat. And so these trends, you have to be really, really careful because a lot of them, you lose weight fast, but then you end up getting off track and you end up gaining even more weight afterward. Mm-hmm. So it's really important. And the biggest thing in what I live by is everything in moderation. Mm-hmm. Moderation. And when I want to treat, or the kids want a treat, I do not sacrifice that. I don't. And if you have a little bit of a treat, and if you have it especially earlier in the day versus right before bed, um, you know, that's not the best thing, obviously. You're going to burn those calories throughout the day. And if you just eat that little piece of chocolate or that little bit of a treat, then you've now satisfied your craving for sugar, and now you don't want it the rest of the day. Mm -hmm versus now it's nine o'clock at night and you're sitting on the couch and you pull out the tub of ice cream. I mean, it's ridiculous. And that really can be counterproductive if you, if you refuse to let yourself have something and then you just want it even more. So, so satisfy have, it. It sounds like two things. I mean, you didn't say it quite this way. I'm going to break it down a little more explicitly. It sounds like you have uh, a focus because you're saying only use a little bit of that once in a while. It sounds like you have a focus on quality of food, but it sounds like even more importantly, right where you started was quantity. Yeah. You know, that you, if you just say, I'm going to do this quantity and that's all I'm going to do. And then the other thing you mentioned is timing. So you got 
quality, quantity, and timing. Those are all three things. It's, it sounds like, could you elaborate on that a little bit? And there are a lot of different factors, like when you eat something, how much you eat something. Obviously, there's portion control. Um, and there are situations where, where you know, people have, um, you know, si different different cases. And so this isn't really for, for everyone. But for the average person, you really just have to eat in moderation and choose if you're still hungry and you're going to in for seconds, choose the healthier choice. Get another serving of the vegetables instead of, you know, the macaroni and cheese or the, the less healthier option. So just make wise choices. And this is key. And everyone hears, oh, yeah, drink water, drink water. But they don't do it. Mm -hmm. Always drink water throughout the day. And if you're trying to lose weight, drink a whole glass of water before every single meal. And sometimes our brain tricks us and we think that we're hungry and we're just thirsty. And I'll have a glass of water and my hunger is gone. Mm -hmm. So always try water first because you may not even be hungry at all. And then just eat in moderation. Try to make healthy choices. Obviously, I like a variety in my diet. I, my daughter and I have gone um, vegetarian. We're actually pescatarian, so we still do eat fish and shell, shellfish. But um, it's fine. Lean protein is great. You know, whatever, whatever you're doing, but just eat in moderation. And save room for dessert, because why not? Have a little treat. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I said it's okay. You can have a little treat because you're worth it. Yeah. You are worth it. We all deserve it. And whether you reward yourself with a massage or a run or a little bit of, you know, a small bowl of ice cream or something like that, it's okay. Irene, thank you so much. You know, this has been very interesting. I think one of the things we want to do with you is I said this before and I want to emphasize it with you when you get further along with your book, just let me know because that that this podcast that we're doing right now is going to be green. It's going to be out there. So we're going to hit it hard with, uh, you know, social media. We do, we do that with every single podcast that we have, but then down the road, when you come up, if you say, Hey, look, here's my book. I'm going to put it up there in the podcast. We'll republish again and hit, hit the social media again. Man, and Actually, keep I'm writing three. <laughs> I have oh. three books. I have well, a health and nutrition book that's coming out. I'm hoping to have it published by the end of this year. Yeah. Self-publishing that. And I'm also working on a healthy recipe cookbook, too. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So and I have a your, lot of things. What's your third one again? Oh, the third one is um, Growing Up with a Bipolar Parent. That's the one that you started with, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's one that's the most important to me. Yeah. Goodness yeah. knows you're a busy woman. You, you, you're, <laughs> you're cooking. Just a little bit. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on board. It's fun. I hope you have a good winter up there outside of Buffalo. And we look forward to talking to you again. Once you get these things cooking along, we'll have you back. Thank you so much, Dr. Parker. I had a great time. Me too. See you. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Core Brain Journal. We're working every day behind the scenes to bring you reports that connect research benches with those street trenches. Here we share the complexity of mind science because, as you know, details really do matter. One of the most pervasive misunderstood challenges is how commonplace medications, like those written for ADHD, are used so regularly without clear guidelines. If you think you'd like more specifics, take a minute to download my two-page PDF packed with video links and references on the absolute essentials of how to start ADHD medications. They're easily available at corebrainjournal.com forward slash start. Thanks for listening. Do connect and stay tuned. Together we can make a difference.